Man, Carla, I'm so sorry about what ended up happening to you. <laughs> Who would have thought that you'd actually fall down all those stairs? You look so sad and messed up now. But I don't care. Better luck next time. <laughs> what are you talking about, Elise? Are you actually that screwed up in the head that you think this is all a joke? You were the one that pushed me down that long flight of stairs, right? Elise, do you not feel any sort of regret for what you did to me? All I did was bump into you a little, yet you decided to make a huge deal of it by throwing yourself down those stairs on purpose. Stop trying to make this all look like it was my fault. Why is everyone trying to blame me for what you did to yourself, Carla? Maybe if you took better care of yourself, you'd have better balance and wouldn't have fallen all the way to the bottom of those stairs. <laughs> I am pregnant right now, which makes it a lot harder for me to stay balanced. I've known for a long time now just how much you hold grudges against me, but I didn't think you'd go as far as trying to hurt me when I'm carrying another life. I am no longer going to allow you anywhere near me, and I'm cutting all ties with you. My husband is saying he's doing the same thing as well. Why is everyone making such a big deal over this? I didn't do anything wrong. You were all being a bunch of jerks by asking me to leave this house for good. Well, you've done enough to me already, and today was the last straw, so kicking you out of the house is our last resort. You are not going to be forgiven by any of us after pushing me down the stairs after coming home to mom and dad's house for a bit before I give birth. All you are to me now is a stranger, and you will no longer get to think of me as your older sister. And don't even think about trying to come back here, because this is no longer your parents' home. You guys are all the worst family imaginable after saying that to me. I didn't even do anything wrong, yet you want me to stay away from you all and never come back again? Well, I'll do the same then. Don't any of you guys dare try talking to me again. Don't worry, because none of us will be. I'm only at mom and dad's house for a little while longer, but you are not welcomed back here. We are going to have the locks on the house changed, all to make sure that we don't have to worry about seeing you again. None of us want you around anymore, so goodbye forever. Yoo-hoo! It's been such a long time, Carla! Are you doing all right? Huh? Who is this that I'm talking with right now? <laughs> what are you saying, Carla? <laughs> you only have one little sister, right? And that's who's talking to you right now. I'm sorry, but I don't have any little sisters. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's been over five years now, and you're still going to be upset with me about all of that? That's all way in the past now, so you can just go ahead and forget about it, okay? <laughs> There's no point in bringing something like that back up again when it's water under the bridge now, right? All you're going to do is start some more drama again and make things worse for yourself. <laughs> what do you mean that's all water under the bridge now? I have no idea what the hell you're going on about. You don't even have the right to decide whether or not something like what happened back then is over with yet. And let me just tell you this. Someone that pushes me down the stairs while I'm pregnant, resulting in me having a miscarriage, is not going to be my little sister any longer. Sorry about what happened back then. There, now we can get back to being good sisters again. What? I'm sure that mom and dad are still living in their old house, right? Well, I'm going to be moving back into that house with my little boy and he'll be able to see his grandparents. <laughs> Make sure to give us your room, okay? What are you going on about? Seriously? So far, I have not been able to follow a single word you're saying because it's all such bullcrap. You think you can come back here out of the blue? And you think bringing your kid with you will be okay? What's wrong with me wanting to move back in with my parents? Recently, there's been a lot of people going back to live with their parents after having a few babies, right? And after having a divorce like me, it's the perfect option moving back in with the folks. I don't really care about what others do and about your divorce. But you are not able to come back because there is no home for you here anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are just going to keep using that as an excuse to keep me away from my parents and their home. But I have a kid that I'm bringing home with me. I will be bringing them their first grandchild, so there's no way Mom is going to tell me to get out of the house when she sees his cute little face. <laughs> and actually, you don't have a kid yet, so you can leave that room and that house and make room for a proper woman. <laughs> 
So how does that sound to you, Clara? <laughs> the house is already very small. And having me and my boy in there will make it too cramped for all of us to live in, right? <laughs> Even after what happened five years ago, you still don't feel any kind of regret? And now you think you can just force your way back into our lives, you freaking witch? You do understand that none of us are okay with you being around us, right? What the hell are you talking about, Carla? You can't say crap to me when you're the one that's been living off mom and dad's money this whole time. <laughs> How much longer do you plan on being a disgusting parasite? I don't have all day to talk with someone who thinks that I'm the parasite as she tries to force her way back into our house. But know that I'm not here living off their money. I'm not even living in the same house as them right now, rather in a house within their neighborhood. I know that you love the relaxing life of not having to do anything besides take their money, but I'm not going to allow it. <laughs> I'm coming back to that house to live with my boy. So you, childless freak, had better get the hell out of there. I'm living in a tower apartment right now, Elise. Freaking liar. <laughs> what would I have to gain from lying to you about that right now? I am living in a tall apartment building at the moment, and so are Mom and Dad. Actually, they live in the same apartment building as me. Huh? What the hell? <laughs> and another thing, I'm not childless like you think. I'm sure you wanted to use your boy as a way of feeling as though you've one-upped me and can say whatever crap you'd like, but I have a kid now as well. And right now, we are all living in this apartment as a happy family. So why are you here talking to me still? Oh my god. <laughs> you've gone so crazy that you're living in a world full of lies. <laughs> Do you really think that I'm going to fall for all that crap? I get that you're still upset at me for something I never even did to you and you're willing to lie all day long to try and make me feel inferior. That's not going to work for me. <laughs> I don't care about what you have to say about me, but I'm telling you right now that I'm not lying to you. But if you still think that I am in fact lying to you, then go right ahead and return back to mom and dad's house. I'm already on my way over there. <laughs> I'm going to be pulling into their driveway in a bit here, so don't even try to hide from me and act as though you're not home. We aren't going to be acting like we're not home. We no longer live in that house anymore, and you need to realize that that's a fact. Hey, what the hell is going on here? What is it this time, Elise? Where the hell did Mom and Dad's house go? All I see here is a driveway and then some empty land where Mom and Dad's house used to be. So you really did go there. I made sure to tell you the truth and everything, yet you still went. You really did think I was lying to you that whole time then. Well, the house was torn down a while ago and all that's left is an open bit of land waiting for the next buyer. Huh? This land is for sale now. So then there really is no house anymore around here. You shouldn't have to be asking me these kinds of questions, Elise. You can see that there is no house there anymore and that all that's left is some dirt and grass in the driveway. Does this mean that you're having such a hard time understanding reality that you can't even tell what's real and what's not anymore? I understand that the house is gone, but do things like this really happen? When the hell did you all move out of this house without telling me about it? I don't even know where you guys are living now, either. I'm trying to ask Mom right now where she went, but she just keeps leaving me on red. And she has the right to. Both Mom and Dad are still very upset with you after what you did to me a year ago. Huh? They're still both upset over that as well? What you did to my baby, then, is the same as killing someone, Elise. And you haven't even tried to apologize for what you did, so how do you think they'd want to forgive you? Nobody in this family has forgiven you, and that's why we never told you about us leaving that house and about where we all moved away to. To be honest, I don't even like telling you about how we moved. We cut all ties with you five years ago, and that means that we don't want anything to do with you anymore. What the hell? I am not laughing about this anymore, Carla. Why are Mom and Dad still staying on your side after I didn't do anything wrong? There's no way they still think that I was the one to blame for your falling, right? And even if I am to blame, I'm still their daughter. It's because you're their daughter that they were so shocked by what you did. 
and became upset enough to never forgive you. What? That baby that you killed was going to be mom and dad's first grandbaby, and they were really looking forward to that. But after you went ahead and pushed me down the stairs out of your hate for me, you ruined everything. Hate for you? I never meant to make you guys think that I hated you, Carla. But you all moving out of the house without ever telling me about it first is messed up. You could have at least told me that you were all leaving. I have the right to know about what you're all doing as my family, right? No, you actually don't have any rights when it comes to us, Elise. <laughs> you are no longer a part of this family. And I thought we made that all clear by telling you to stay away from us forever. But all of that is in the past now. Right now, none of that has anything to do with the present. I have had enough of your self-centered attitude towards us, Elise. Stop that crap right now. For whatever reason, you kept saying to everyone that you'd have a baby before me. And out of jealousy towards me getting ready to have my baby, you pushed me down the stairs so that you could stop my chances of giving birth and prolong the time in which you could have a baby of your own first. I am never going to forget about what you did to my baby and I, Elise. Do you actually think in that tiny brainless skull of yours that I'll forgive you for that? I seriously didn't think that something like that would get everyone so upset with me, though. And to be honest, I didn't push you that hard in the first place. I've told you all that a hundred times by now, right? You cannot change the fact that you pushed me down those stairs on purpose. So stop freaking trying! There is nothing else you can do about us, Elise. We have all moved away into a tower apartment building. A, a tower apartment building? What? So you really all did move into a tower apartment building together? Do you really think something like that could be possible? Whether you think it's true or not, it's a fact. So I have nothing else to say to you about it now. What do you mean you have nothing else to say? Let me live there with you guys right now. I have a boy of my own as well, right? Do you find pleasure in making a homeless mother live on the streets with her son in poverty? Who gives a flying frick about you and that brat? You never cared about me when I was pregnant, instead pushing me down those stairs and literally killing my baby. How about you let your son have your phone so I can tell him what you did to my baby? What, what do you think he'll say? Wait, Carla, don't tell my son about things like that. I don't plan to tell him any of that, so calm down. And it's not like I have a way to tell him because you are never going to be seeing my family and I in your whole life. Huh? What do you mean I'll never get to see your family? I want to bring my son back home to his grandparents so he can see everyone in his family. And like I've been saying, you have no family or home to bring him back to. So just shut the hell up about it already. We are all living in this tower apartment building on two separate floors. Mom and Dad are on one floor, and my family and I are on the floor above. We were able to do all of this with the help of a friend and can now live close to one another while also still having our own places. But you aren't going to be a part of this family, because nobody here wants you to be. And I will not let you around my child either, as I'm scared you might do the same thing to him as you did to my last baby. Why are you being such a witch? I am a part of that family, so you all stop being babies and let me come home. How old is your kid? I wonder if they're around the same age as my son. I think the both of them could get along really well and become super close cousins. So please let us come live with you guys and bring more happiness to the family. After what you did to my last baby, I'm not going to let you anywhere near my kid now. Who the hell do you think you are, Elise? Nobody here wants you in this family, and I literally mean nobody. And as for my husband, he doesn't even like the mention of your name because it brings him terrible memories. I'm sorry, Elise, but you are nothing to us, and we all want to keep it that way. I'm nothing to you guys? What the hell is wrong with you all? My son is a part of your family, right? And right now, neither of us have a place to call home anymore. Do you not feel bad for my son, at least? Mom just got a call from your husband a little bit ago, Elise. Huh? He told her that after talking with you about wanting a divorce, you didn't finish the talks with him and ran away from your home with your guys' son. And he says the reason he wants the divorce is because you've been having an affair. 
Your son is only two years old, yet you leave him with your husband 24-7 so that you can go out and have fun with that other man. Are you going to tell me that your husband is lying about all of that? What he said to mom is in fact true. Why the hell would that bastard get my mom involved in all of this? He's literally the worst husband anyone could ever ask for. Now he's made you all aware of what's been going on. Don't tell me that you ran away from him with your son because you're afraid that he'll take your boy away from you and force you to pay child support. Well, if that's your reason for running out of your house with your son, then hurry up and give him back to your husband and stop complaining about how bad we should feel for your son. And do that before the police are made aware of this. The police? <laughs> There's no need for the police to get in all of this. Carla, please don't be that upset with me. I just want to come and live with all you guys again with my son as well. I know that for a while now I haven't been doing a great job as his mother, leaving him at home all day with his father. But I'm sure mom will be thrilled to see him, right? And I bet that dad will also forgive me and let us be one big happy family again, right? Can you help me get them to forgive me? And also being able to live in that tower apartment, well, it would be freaking awesome, huh? Elise, I think I have a great understanding of what's going on here now. After these past five years, you have only become more toxic of a person. And not just to me, but to everyone you ever bother hanging around. Huh? What the hell does that mean? You... you wanted to use your son as a way of getting back into this family, and then wanted to have mom and dad care for him for you, right? And I'm sure you thought it'd be pretty nice that way because mom and dad would be the ones paying to support your son, and not you, right? This isn't a freaking game, Elise. What the hell is your idea of children? Hold up, why are you getting even more mad now? I told you that I want to be together with my son and you guys, right? You want to be together? Good freaking luck, Elise. I don't think that's going to happen, though, because you had your chance to live together with your son and family, but chose to cheat on your husband and leave your son home alone for most of the day until your husband came home to care for him. I haven't seen what life was like in your husband's house, but I can imagine it very well. You have no right to any child when you treat them like that. Carla, I'm sorry. Don't be so upset with me. I don't have anywhere left to go right now. If you don't help me, I don't know where I'll be able to go. Help me, please. I'll make sure to change after. Go screw yourself. <laughs> huh? Why? I'm being serious about asking for your help, yet you're still going to say no? You are a complete stranger. Why would I let a homeless stranger and her beast move into my lovely home with my family, hmm? I don't care about what happens to you, but I do feel bad for your son, so hurry up and give him back to his dad. And I'm going to tell your husband right now that you're near mom and dad's old house so he can come get you. Huh? Why are you telling him needless things like that? You do not have to do that! Stop typing in all caps, you child. And if you didn't want me doing something unnecessary, then maybe you should have stayed home and away from my family. <laughs> You're the one without a child, so maybe you should leave that boy with his dad and get lost. It's been five years now, but what you did to me is still fresh in everyone's head. At this point, you have grown so toxic that I can't even begin to try understanding why you act like that. Wait, Carla, I'm sorry. I promise that I've learned my lesson. Well, if you learned your lesson, then you can get the hell away from my family and I and stay away. Go rot in hell, you witch. And once you're done rotting away, maybe then I'll be willing to forgive you. After that, Carla did her best to ignore anything else of what Elise had to say to her. She even went ahead and blocked her number as well as had the rest of the family do the same in order to avoid any further stress. Elise's husband then came and found her and his son and brought them both home with him safely. He then was able to get full custody of his son and kicked Elise out of the house, asking for her to pay child support every month. Of course, she won't be able to do that and will spend the rest of her life on the streets with nowhere to call home besides a park bench. There was no avoiding this outcome after the way she treated everyone, and so we can all agree that her life on the streets is well warranted. Even her parents don't think of her as family anymore, 
or so she really has ended up as the worst kind of homeless. With no one and nowhere willing to cater to her toxic attitude anymore. Have you seen my new dress? You know, the black one with a slit up the thigh? It has a low dipped back as well. I can't find it. It was in my room, in a bag hanging up in my wardrobe, so I don't know where it could have got to. You mean the one you got the other day when we went shopping and it was like half price? Yeah, that one. Oh, I took it. Huh? What do you mean you took it? Exactly what I said. I took the dress for myself. Um, why? Well, because I wanted it. You knew that I bought that dress for tonight. I told you how this was a really important night for me. I've got a date with the man who I've been crushing on for the longest time. I wanted to look as good as I possibly could, which is why I bought the dress. This could literally be the man who I marry and I want to make a good impression on him. You literally have no idea how much I actually like this man. You need to give me back my dress right now. I mean, why did you even take it? You're not going anywhere to wear it. You didn't even ask me if you could borrow it either. You knew that I liked that dress, but you acted incredibly selfishly and took it for yourself. What? Yeah. When we were shopping, I saw the dress and I thought that it looked nice. But then you went and bought it, and it was the last one in my size. Not to mention that the store lady said that they weren't getting any more of that particular dress back in, so I couldn't go back to buy it. Also, I would never be caught dead wearing the same thing as you. So I couldn't very well order myself the dress offline knowing you had it too. So I decided I was going to take it because you took it from me first, and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't wearing the same thing as you. You never liked that dress. When you saw it, you said it looked cheap and tacky and you swore you would never wear something with so little class. Apparently, your style is jean, short shorts, and a bra, given what you bought that day. You only won the dress now because I liked it and bought it for myself. It's so typical of you. You always get jealous over whatever I have and you take it for yourself. But I'm not going to let you walk all over me this time. You need to give it back now. I'm not giving it back. You stole it from me first. I was only saying that it was a horrible dress so that you didn't buy it for yourself. I was going to go back for it later. So, if anything, you're the selfish one. You should have known I actually wanted the dress. I'm not arguing with you anymore about this, Debbie. I only have a couple of hours to get ready for my date. So either you can bring me the dress in the next five seconds, or I'm coming into your room and grabbing it myself. Well, you can have it anyway. I tried it on and it just didn't look right. I tried modifying it, but nothing made it fit properly. So there might be a few tears in it. Oh, and I think I might have gotten some pink nail varnish on it when I painted my nails. Oops. Are you kidding me? You've ruined my dress? How could you do that to me? It cost me a lot of money. That's it. I'm coming to get my dress to see exactly what you've done. And I'm telling mom. Whatever. As if mom is going to be bothered. You know that I'm the favorite. She doesn't care what I do. I'm really not going to be in any trouble at all. Nuh-uh. You've gone too far this time. She'll definitely have something to say this time. Yeah, okay. You keep thinking that. Phoebe, how dare you steal your sister's things? I did not raise you to be like that. What? Mom, I didn't steal anything. Debbie was the one who took my dress. The one I bought the other week, you know? I showed it to you. She went into my room and took it, and now it's totally ruined. She's ripped it and spilt nail varnish on it, and there's no way I can wear it now. Do you realize how important this evening actually is for me? Hang on. Is tonight the night of your date with that man who you've had a crush on for ages? Yes! Oh. Well, that doesn't mean that you can't share your things, though. I'm sure she didn't mean to ruin it. She probably just wanted to try it on to see if it would suit her, so that she could get one if she liked it. I know she wouldn't actually destroy it on purpose. It's just a big accident. Ugh, you always take her side. It might not matter to you, but I am fed up of Debbie taking what she wants when she wants it. There's no way I can wear this dress now. I'm going to have to wear a different one, which won't make the same impression on him. So from now on, I'm going to get a lock on my door, and if Debbie manages to take anything of mine, I'm just going to go into her room and take it back, regardless of whether she wants me in her room or not. There's no need to be so dramatic. Look, next time, maybe just ask nicely. Debbie's not unreasonable. Besides, it's been rough for her lately, breaking up with her boyfriend and all, so we need to be a bit more understanding. Mom, making excuses for her isn't going to help her. Her so-called rough patch is entirely her fault. She cheated on her boyfriend. 
I'm actually glad he had the sense to leave when he found out. Besides, it doesn't give her the right to take my things simply because she's bored. Now, you're just being cruel. Things were complicated between her and Jake. So your little sister made a mistake. She's only human. It happens. Just like with your dress. You just need to forgive her and move on. It's the best thing to do. When she apologizes, then I'll forgive her. Anyway, I need to go now if I'm going to make it to the dinner on time. Especially considering I've got to sort out a whole new outfit. I'll be back later. So I take it your dinner went well the other week? Huh? Oh, yeah, it went amazingly. We really hit it off. I've been seeing him pretty much every day for the last two weeks. We can't get enough of each other. Uh-huh, sure. I'm also guessing this new boy toy of yours bought you a new car, yeah? What on earth are you on about? Well, I just noticed that you seem to have a new car. And it's an incredibly fancy and expensive one at that. There's no way you could have afforded to buy that yourself. So I'm guessing your boyfriend got it for you? I have to admit, that's pretty smart. To get some rich guy to buy you what you want. Shame I didn't think of it first. Oh, you mean the Ashton Martin in the garage? Yeah, obviously. There aren't any other fancy cars around, are there? It's not mine. I'm not stupid. I know it's yours. There's no way mom or dad could afford something like that. And the only thing that's changed recently is you've started dating that guy. I mean, looking at you, he must be pretty desperate. You're not the prettiest girl around, so if he's bribing you to be with him with a car like that, imagine what he'd buy for me to be his girlfriend. Um, he's not bribing me to be with him. And he's not desperate at all. He's incredibly handsome, in fact. And the car isn't mine. You're a rubbish liar. Anyway, I'm going to take it out for a while. I'm only telling you this because you'll just get mom to yell at me if I don't ask your permission to borrow your things. Debbie? First of all, you're not insured to drive that car, so you can't take it anywhere. Secondly, it's not even my car, so there's no way that I'm letting you drive it even an inch off of the drive. I know you're just trying to lie to me so that I don't borrow the car, but it's not going to work. I swear, Debbie, if you touch that car, you'll regret it. You could get into a lot of trouble. I mean it. It's not mine, so you can't just take it. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I don't believe you. So stop with the pathetic excuses, okay? Anyway, I'm going to go and have a fun drive. See ya. Debbie, where are you? I told you not to take that car anywhere. I can't believe you came into my room and stole the keys for it. Answer me, Debbie. Ugh, oh, what do you want? You better not be texting and driving. Do you know how dangerous that is? Jeez, fine. I'll pull over. Happy? Now, what do you want? Bring that car back right now. Why? Worried that everyone will think I look way cooler in it than you do? It's too late for that. I told you that it's not my car. It's my boyfriend's. Nice try, but I don't believe you. Debbie, I'm not joking. That is a very expensive car that you're driving around in, and it's not even mine. For all intents and purposes, you've stolen that car, and the owner of it, my boyfriend, would have every right to call the police for theft or something like that. Phoebe, you're rubbish at lying. I know you're just trying to get your car back simply because you don't want me driving around in it. Well, that's not going to happen. You can go and tell mom if you want, but there's nothing she can do but yell at me when I get home. For now, though, I'm going to enjoy my time, driving around in a beautiful-looking car and turning as many heads as I can. I've already been approached by at least five guys wanting to talk to me about the car and giving me their phone numbers. I'm not going to give that up just because you want to be selfish and not share. Okay, fine. But don't say I didn't warn you. Warn me about what? No, no. You didn't want to know when I tried to tell you, so I'm not going to bother now. Have fun driving around looking cool, whilst you can. You're just trying to scare me. Well, it's not going to work. Uh-huh. Sure. Whatever. Now leave me alone. I'm driving, don't you know? Oh, and I might have scratched the car a little bit, but you don't mind, right? It's not like you can't afford to get it repainted or whatever. Uh-huh. Of course. You have fun. Don't worry about damaging the car or anything. I'm sure everything will work out just fine. If you think being calm and uncaring is going to get me to bring the car back, you're wrong, you know? Oh, I know. You won't bring the car back. But it won't be my problem for very much longer. Huh? Oh, you'll find out soon enough. Phoebe! Why didn't you tell me who owned this car? Do you know how much trouble I'm in? 
This is all your fault. Oh, hi, Debbie. If you remember correctly, I did tell you that my boyfriend owned the car, not me. But you didn't tell me that your boyfriend, Max Wright, is a CEO of one of the most successful cooking industries in the world. How do you even know him? How did you meet? Well, you know, I worked as a waitress at that new, really fancy restaurant that just opened up in town. Yeah? Turns out, Max is the owner of it. He was there opening night, being the chef and trying to make sure that things went smoothly. Well, there was a bit of a hiccup at one point. Some dishes got mixed up and one of the chefs had to go to the hospital because he cut his hand really badly. I told Max, who was stressing, that I was good at cooking. I mean, I've been to culinary school and this job was just a way to try and break into the industry at a high level. So he asked me to jump in and help out the other chefs. I guess I really impressed him because at the end of the night, he came up to me and we started talking. And well, the rest is history. Anyway, he asked me to look after the car because it was a birthday gift for his younger brother who's turning 21 next week. You could have told me all of this before I took it out. Now I'm in a huge amount of trouble. I tried, but you just said that I was lying just so that I didn't have to share my car with you. What? But he's suing me for stealing his car. He's even threatened to get the police involved because I banged it up a bit. Well, that's your fault. I thought the car was yours. I was trying to teach you a lesson. By purposefully wrecking the car that you thought was mine? How selfish and petty can you get? Look. You're going to have to talk to Max and just explain the whole situation to him, okay? I can't afford to pay what he wants, so just tell him that you said that I could drive it. That way, it'll be your fault and I won't have to be taken to court. LOL, that's not happening. How do you think he found out about you driving it to begin with? You mean, you told him? Yep. I knew that you'd probably damage the car just to be spiteful to me, so I told Max all about what was happening. Thankfully, he told me that he understood and that it wasn't my fault. He also said that he knows your true character now so he can avoid any tricks he might try to pull in the future. He also told me that he'd sort the car situation out and not to worry about it. Now I know what he had in mind, and I have to say, it's quite nice to see you finally facing the consequences of your actions for a change. I can't believe you would purposefully throw me under the bus like this. You are such a horrible sister. You're the one who should be going to court, not me. Why? I haven't done anything. Yes, you have. I should be the one with a handsome and rich boyfriend who buys me whatever I want. Instead, you somehow managed to trick one into being with you. You think you're so much better than me? Well, you're not. Debbie, I've never thought that I'm better than you. I've just gone about my life and found my own happiness my way. You've not worked hard for anything in your life. Instead, you just blame everyone else for all of your problems. Well, this time, there's no one else to blame but yourself. And you're going to have to face the consequences of your actions whether you like it or not. Maybe next time you'll actually listen to me when I try to tell you not to take something that doesn't belong to you. Please, Phoebe, just take the fall for this for me. No, Debbie, it's time you actually act like an adult instead of a spoiled child. Ugh, I hate you. In the end, Max took Debbie to court over the theft and damage of his car. Debbie tried to blame everyone but herself for what had happened, but the judge simply ignored her. He ordered her to pay Max a substantial amount of money in reparations for all the damages that she had caused to the vehicle. To do this, Debbie had to get a job at a local supermarket, which she wasn't a big fan of, but with no other way to pay Max the money, she had to stick it out. Meanwhile, mine and Max's relationship really took off. We became really close and even moved in together. We're going away this weekend and I really think he might pop the question. I can't wait. At the end of all of this though, I just hope that Debbie has learned her lesson on asking to borrow people's things and accepting that when someone says no, it means no. Boundaries are important to have and important for people to respect. And as long as Debbie doesn't do that, she'll constantly find herself in trouble. Regardless of if it's stealing a car or hurting someone's feelings, boundaries are there for a reason and hopefully she knows this now.